Namo Shakyamuni Buddhaya. Do you respect the day? Dear brothers and sisters, do you know the whole Sangha? Today is the 14th of January, 2024. We are at Deer Park Monastery on the day of mindfulness after the end of the three months retreat, the winter retreat. This Today is the last day in 20, the last day of the Rains Retreat, 2023, 2024. And I am aware that this winter retreat has passed by very quickly. And today, when uh, we did walking, I saw the Sangha taking every step, very peaceful, uh, very easeful, and I feel very happy. And today, uh, we still, we still have, we st we're still present for the last day of the 90-day retreat. And the brothers and sisters and our lay practitioners are still here to this moment. And so I was, I was aware of that. I had a lot of, um, was very fortunate. I'm very, I'm very grateful because not everybody had a whole three months to live together and to, to take every step in happiness like that. And this morning, uh, everybody was sitting, doing uh, sitting meditation and listening to, to uh, the text of touching the earth, reading that we are very happy, that we can, that we can offer to ourselves. At the same time, that means we are offering each each peaceful step, step in freedom. And if there is a gift, then that that is the gift, the gift of a mindful breath, a mindful step. And that is also the gift we want to offer to our ancestors, to our teacher, to Mother Earth, and to our ancestors and descendants. Because that present, when we are here for three months and practicing together, we come here to practice together, we are present for each other every day. And that's how we offer that gift. It's not like we go to the market or wait for Christmas. And so today I felt that when we did walking meditation to uh, Mount Indu, and we are, we are all the present for the Sangha, for the community, and each of us is a present to our ancestors and, 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 and Mother Earth. And today we uh, will we'll have a, uh, a, a ceremony. It's called the Pravarana Ceremony. It's a very important ceremony in Buddhist tradition. It is the mark of the end of a three-month retreat of the Sangha. And after the Pavarana, and each brother and sister gains one more Dhamma age, monastic age. We, uh, we don't count towards the end of the year, but we count towards the end of the rains retreat. And because the uh, value, the virtue, the quality of practice through each day, that is our age. It's not about the years. It's not about how long, how, how old we are physically. Because if we are older in physical age, and we don't know how to practice, we don't know happiness, then we're still people who are seeking. We're still babies looking for the path. So I'm aware that three months is very lucky. And the Pavarana retreat, uh, the Pavarana ceremony, we can all attend. Um, just, just um, soon. Tu tu, meaning tu is uh, self. It's a uh, we 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 gave rise to an aspiration from ourselves, or we 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 ask from ourselves, from the community. Meaning, invite the sangha, invite the elder brothers. Uh, younger, younger and elder brothers and sisters to share shortcomings to us so that we can see clearly how we are practicing. Or there is uh, another meaning, meaning shining light. It means that we uh, speak out from ourselves so that our friends on the path can point out the, the good points and the not so good points in our practice so that they can see more clearly we can see more clearly during the rains retreat but in buddhist tradition today is the end of the rains retreat that is when we do that ceremony but 
today we will see that the um, brothers and sisters, sisters we also have the the ceremony to invite the most elder monk and nun to come up and and represent that <coughs> and um, it can be an abbot or it can be the abbess or it could be the 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 eldest um, monastic but we have a very short time so we only speak a few words to represent it but the important thing is that the sangha will give each uh, each of us a, a a letter it's called letter of shining light and um, our teacher uh, is very has great wisdom and he knows that the pavarana is is a ceremony that has been around for a long time the do is to shine light on to, and to ask for shining light and so he 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 he, uh, he brought about a, a, a practice of shining light we don't wait until today to do that I don't know what about the sisters, but for the brothers, every Friday we had uh, two brothers, two, two brothers, and each has 30 minutes. And today we only have a few minutes, <laughs> so we have a few minutes, and we have so many people. How can we have enough time to shine light on everybody? And so each Friday, each brother had 30 minutes, and so instead of inviting just one person, we invite the whole community of brothers to shine light everything on us. Mm, mentioning points of beauty, uh, our flowers, but also the points of not yet beautiful, meaning the mud. And mentioning the practices, how we can practice for the upcoming year. And so when we sit and we listen to the elder brothers and sisters to, 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 to join their palms and uh, the younger brothers and sisters join their palms to ask for shining light, and I feel very touched because only, only practitioners can do that. Because I think that we ask for improvements, we ask for the going forward in the monastic community on the practice. But outside, we usually ask for a raise in our salary, our job. But the richer we become, the more ego we have. It's not easy for us to ask for shining lights from our blood brothers and sisters or mother. And so in this shining light session, we do it every, every Friday throughout the whole three month retreat. And so each Friday we can hear the sharing from our brothers. It's very nourishing. And I feel very happy because the practice. First of all, the meaning is that we want to mm, beautify, renew the word tutap. It's like that. It's like uh, to improve it, to make it better, to perfect it. And so if we don't see our suffering, we don't see our shortcomings and, and unskillfulness, and we don't want the Sangha to shine light on us, then how can we see those shortcomings? If we don't see our shortcomings, we don't see our suffering, then how can we practice to transform? And so the key of shining light is to ask to ask to be better. And when we can do that, that means practice. That is, that, that's what it means by to practice. The second meaning is from the, the root, pavana, that means that there's a, a Sanskrit word. In, it means to, to, to cultivate. So it means with the Sangha, we cultivate. Whatever we don't have, we cultivate it so we have it. Meaning in the meaning we don't in the beginning we don't have happiness. We are we are quite dry, we are sad, we don't have happiness and joy, we don't see our flowers. And so we practice after a while, then we become fresh. Uh, I don't know what you see, but when when I see that there is a practice, the more I practice, the more fresh I become and become more confident. And so practicing in the beginning, we don't have much happiness yet. We don't see ourselves as a bouquet of flowers. And so the more we practice, the more happiness we have. And we see that our flowers, we see our flowers. And when 
during the time of shining light, the Sangha helps us to see that. And seeing our brothers and sisters, we see them all as flowers. I invite everyone to listen to one sound of the bell. Sangha, today I'd like to share a sutra. I'm very bad at uh, researching and studying the sutra, but maybe in this brain retreat, the sutra is something that is touching me, um, and I'm practicing with this. I'd like to offer to the brothers and sisters who are going to Vietnam, and so then the lay friends who have been here with us for the three-month retreat, uh, heading home. So for sure, you're going to face whatever is mentioned in this sutra. It, it has the name of Discourse on the Five Ways to of Putting an End to Anger. So in this sutra, there are five ways to put an end to angers. And I see that this sutra is very good, and I love the examples given in this sutra. This sutra is, was given by Sariputta, wasn't given by the Buddha. Sariputta is a, one of the ten great disciples of the Buddha. When he shared this sutra, it was just like the Buddha was sharing, because he was very close to the Buddha. And why do we have this sutra? This was because when we read this sutra, and we see that back in those days, in the ancient time, the, the time when the Buddha was still alive, and the brothers and sisters were sometimes angry, was also jealous, and also blaming one another. It's not like they didn't. So that's why we had the sutra. And, and so now when we have that kind of uh, attitude of anger, jealousy, or blaming, and we are on our downward slope, that's okay. That's normal. The thing is that in this sutra, it points out five concrete practices ways to put an end to anger. So this sutra is, uh, belongs to the um, uh, example, using the image of water as the main example, same, the main image to shine light on ourselves. So i like to uh, ask permission to read each method. Hopefully Brother Mindia can uh, translate all this. Well, I have the sutra in English. so. And so in uh, that time, it was in the uh, Anattapindika Monastery, uh, the Sariputta, um, in the um, Jetta Grove. So he came and he asked to share with the um, ordained communities. My friends, today I want to share with you five ways of putting an end to anger. Please listen carefully and put into practice what I teach. Bhikkhus agreed and listened carefully. The Venerable Sariputta said, what are these five ways of putting an end to anger? This is the first method. My friends, if there is someone whose bodily actions are not kind, but those words are but whose words are kind, if you feel anger towards that person but you are wise, you will know how to meditate in order to put an end to your anger. My friends say there is a big shoe practicing asceticism, who wears a patchwork robe. One day, he is going past a garbage pile filled with excrement, urine, mucus, and many other filthy substances. And he sees the pile in one piece of cloth, still intact. Using his left hand, he picks up the piece of cloth, and he takes the other end to stretch, stretch it out with his right hand. He observed that this piece of cloth is not torn and has not been stained by excrement, urine, spiltum, or other kinds of filth. So he folds it 
and puts it away to take home to wash and to sew into his patchwork robe. My friends, if you are wise, when someone's bodily actions are not kind, but his words are kind, you should not pay attention to his unkind bodily actions, but only be attentive to his kind words. This will help you put an end to your anger. This is how a wise person should practice. So I would like to go deeper into this uh, matter. These are the five ways to put an end to anger. So, Sariputta said that the first method, I'd like to share this because there was one time our teacher shared with us this. So, for example, we as human, it's like this circle. The first one, the first method is body, meaning bodily actions. This is uh, words, or speech. So, meaning the bodily actions are not kind, but the speech is very lovely. And the example is a uh, piece of cloth. It's still intact. It's in a pile of garbage. Remember, huh? cloth in the pile of garbage. And Sariputta said that, for example, back in those days, you know that the brothers and sisters didn't have cloth and, uh, to wear. So they, 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 the, the, the patchwork ropes, and they had to go and sca uh, scavenge and, and uh, salvage these um, pieces of thrown away, discarded uh, patches of um, cloth to sew together. So ropes back then were very uh, like a rare thing to come to come by. So this pile of garbage was very filthy. And he thinks, the monk thinks that, oh, if, if I can wash this cloth clean, I can use it. So it's the same way. If that person has bodily actions are not kind, you see that person doesn't go to activities. That person practices in such a way that he doesn't go to activity, activities or she doesn't go to activities. In the, in the Sangha, Oh, we see that uh, someone who has a very uh, uh, short temper and the way they walk, the way they, 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 they do things. But when we drink tea with them, then they are very sweet. So if we are wise and we practice, we put our focus on that. That is a, a, a piece of cloth that is still intact. The way they speak, is very lovely. When we pay attention to that, then we don't have anger. Because in, in our psychology, when we see someone who does something we are not satisfied with, and we are ang angry, then we, we will forget everything. We see that person as an anger. There's nothing in that person that we can love. But that is not true. The bodily actions are not kind, but their speech is very kind. And so the practice is how we can see the positive point, this positive point. So in my range retreat, I'm seeing the positive points of the brothers. I, I put the other uh, negative points away. I'm a little, you know, I still need to learn a lot in my practice. So I just focus on the positive points. So the first thing is that it will nourish my own joy and my own happiness. Then I can love that person. And we have, when I have joy and happiness, then I open my heart. And then I can embrace that. That's how cool it is. So anger doesn't have the opportunity to come up. But if we don't know how to practice, then we don't see the, on the, 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 the left side. We only see on the right side. Then anger comes up, flame of anger comes up. Why? What kind of practice are you doing? You don't show up for activities. We think about that all day. So then suddenly we nourish this anger in our, in our heart. And that bothers our life. 
But when we only focus on that point, the positive point, then it doesn't bother us, but it nourishes us. And that is the, 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 the good point at, on the sutra. I don't know if you can see okay. Yeah? Okay, here is, this is the second method. Maybe I'll, 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 I'll be short because um, we have a ceremony. So I'd like to draw first. This is the second method. So this is body. Uh, body is the bodily action. So this is speech or words we use, spoken words. Yes. So this is the second method, my friends. If you become angry with someone whose words are not kind, whose words are not kind, but whose bodily actions are kind. If you are wise, you will know how to meditate in order to put an end to your anger. My friends, say that not far from the village, there is a deep lake, and the surface of that lake is covered with algae and grass. There is someone who comes near that lake who is very thirsty, suffering greatly from the heat. This person takes off his clothes, jumps into the water, and using their hand to clear away the algae and grass, enjoys bathing and drinking the cool water of the lake. It is the same way, my friends, with someone whose words are not kind, but whose bodily actions are kind. Do not pay attention to that person's words. Only be attentive to his bodily actions. In order to be able to put an end to your anger, someone who is wise should practice in this way. So this is when the speech is not lovely, but bodily actions are lovely. And the example, as Sariputta mentioned, the lake, is a lake, a deep lake, but uh, covered with uh, algae and grass on the surface. So I see that the sutra is very nice. This is a very poetic image. Every one of us is a lake, a deep lake. You are a deep lake to me, and I am a deep lake to you. And so we have respect towards each other. We don't know what it is in there, in that deep lake. But when there is heat, we know that that lake is very beneficial. We can take a swim, we can, we can bathe in it, then the heat is gone. So when we live in the Sangha, we see that someone who bodily action is not kind, I mean, speech is not kind, but bodily actions are very inclusive and kind, working all the time, quietly, to serve the community. Even though that person doesn't know how to communicate, it's a little um, crude sometimes. But if we lose our mindfulness, anything that person said, something that person said, will, 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 will hurt us. Then we get angry with that person. We forget that person is also a lake. But the unkind speech is just like the grass and algae covering covering the surface of the lake. So if we practice, we focus on the bodily action of that person, which are kind. It's only unskillful in, his, in, in, in their speech in that moment. But, but in fact, that person is a very lovely person. If we can just put away the algae and the grass, then we can, we can, we can bathe in that river, I mean, in that lake. So I'd like to share with the Sangha, I am in this situation, I am in this case. So I'd like to share something. One time I said something that wasn't lovely and uh, caused uh, sadness in the sisters. So before the range retreat, there was a monastic retreat. There was one time the Sangha was playing volleyball, brothers and sisters. So we only play <laughs> during the monastic retreat, we only play. There was a uh, kind of like a um, champion competition for volleyball. And so brothers were very happy, very fun playing. Uh, I don't know, I was a little more competitive and then I forget. And there was a sister next to me. I said something to her like, I, I, I did lose my mindfulness and one, one elder sister sitting next to me is, 
like it uh, felt like she wasn't being included, and the sisters were being uh, being like criticized by me. Like maybe mm, discrimination against gender or something. And so she said to me, "My younger brother, your words are not lovely. We're not competing. We're not losing or winning. We play to build the sangha." So then I was startled. I didn't mean like that. Uh, it was just because it was just fun. And I said that, and she was hurt. Like clearly, I didn't mean that way. I didn't mean I didn't. I wasn't disrespectful towards her intentionally. So after that, after all uh, other activities are done, I came to her, and my action was that I apologized to her immediately. Like the elder sister, it is my shortcoming. Because my action is in, intentionally, I I didn't want that to happen. I I'm a boy, so I I want to play and compete. When I play, I forget everything. Those around me, those who don't know how to play, like, I, I forget about everybody. And I see, uh, I see the sisters are kind of like uh, I tease them with a the word, but it it just means that they don't know how to play. That's what I call them. Um, but then afterwards, she actually cried because it touched a seed. Uh, and then I, I, I shared something. I shared from my heart. So I saw that siblinghood is most important. The beauty of our mind is is most important. But at that time, there's the algae and grass there. It's like Santa Ana, all the grass, all the things that that cover the lake. At that time, that's how I was, and I saw that it's okay. I'm a deep lake. She is also a deep lake. So we respect each other. So when I came to her to apologize, and she was able to accept it and embrace it, she saw that I'm a deep lake as well. It's just little grass covering. And so the next day, we came back together, and everything was fine. So that is the practice. If at that time I said something like that, and she held that anger through through all the rains retreat, then we just ruined our rains retreat. But we were able to keep to preserve the siblinghood and share that with each other. And so the good thing is how can we see in each other that we are all deep like. If we have unkind speech, then just focus on the kindness of the bodily action, so we are not swayed by the anger. That is a practice of a wise person. So the third person, the third method. I don't know if I'm sharing like this. The community uh, sees. Is it okay? I like to share it in, in Vietnamese today because we're heading to Vietnam. I don't know when I go to Vietnam and I speak Vietnamese, uh, not so good, and I will be reprimanded. Uh, I wanted to to speak English, but I want to I want to renew my Hue accent, like a central Vietnamese accent. Otherwise, when I go back home, they will say that I've lost my roots. Like, oh, brother Manto is a little westernized now, and so I'm sorry, dear Sangha, today. That's why I'm speaking in Vietnamese. So, so this is the third method. My friends, if there is someone whose bodily actions and words are not kind, but who still has a little kindness in in their heart, if you feel anger toward that person and are wise, you will know how to meditate to put an end to your anger. My friends say there is someone going to a crossroad, crossroads. He is there weak, thirsty, poor, hot, deprived, and filled with sorrow. When they arrive at the crossroad, they see a buffalo's footprint with a little stagnant rainwater in it. They think to himself, "There is a very, there's very little water in this buffalo's footprint. But if I use my hand or I leave to scoop it up, I will stir it up, and it will become muddy and undrinkable. Therefore, I will have to kneel down with my arms and knees on the earth, put my lips right to the water, and drink it directly." Straight away, they just do that. My friends, when you see someone whose bodily actions and words are not kind, but where there is still a little kindness in their heart, do not pay attention to their actions and words, but to the little kindness in their heart, so that you may put an end to your anger. Someone who is wise should practice in that way. 
So this is the third image. We are using the three uh, actions. Bodily actions, thinking, and speech as the representation of a person. So now is the action of the body, the bodily action. This person is not kind. And the speech is even more unkind. But in their heart, there is still a little kindness. So this is the point. The point is, there is a little kindness right here. Just a little kindness. And the example that Sariputta offered or shared is the example of rainwater in the buffalo's footprint. So, Sanka, bear in mind that back in those days, the, they, um, the, the Sangha and the Buddha just, just walk with their, on their foot. They didn't have water bottle, no water bottles. So when they see, they see water at the lake, they just drink. And so when they go on alms, alms round, and then this person was walking on the, in the desert. Luckily, they saw um, a, a buffalo footprints. As there was a lot of buffaloes and cows back in those days. And so, there is a uh, when we see a buffalo f buffalo's footprints is pretty deep, and the rain comes down, then there is stagnant water there. So the example is this: this person doesn't have any kindness in bodily actions or speech, but there's l still little kindness in their heart, just like a little bit of rainwater in the buffalo's footprints. Isn't that pretty cool? So we say he, and then this person saw that. Oh, I shouldn't waste this rainwater. Just a little bit of rain wa rainwater. It's okay. So how can I drink this now? So if I use a piece of r r cloth or using my hands, then it's going to stir up all the mud. So that's why they put their lips right on that water to drink it, to survive. Um, so this is an example. Someone who is, is quite is going under quite a suffering. And we see this in our lay friends sometimes, or our practitioners. We practice in such a way that when that person is suffering, their speech and their bodily actions are not kind. And we see that this person is living in a situation without love, without care, without, without training. And so that person is a little crude, but in that person's heart, they want to practice. They want to come here to learn something, to learn a loving word, to, to begin anew with, with their mother, because mother suffers a lot. It's kind of like, oh, this uncle, this, he looks a little strict and a little hard, but he wants to learn something. And then I, suddenly we, we see this. So if we are a practitioner, we should not skip this. We need to be able to see that, that that is a true practitioner. So instead of focusing on this or that, then it's okay, let go. It's, it's enough. And we see this person is quite lovely. Let's just water this lovely uh, mind so that it can embrace the whole circle. That is the practice of Sariputta. And so Sariputta said that that person has to has to kneel down and drink directly from the buffalo footprint. So the thirst and the heat can be cured, and so that person can continue on, on their path. So in our practice, it's the same. We, can, we, we, we should not skip in any scenario. We don't see that person is doing something unkind, saying something unkind, and then we just shoo that person away. And, the, and, and our teachers taught us that in our Sangha, not everyone is perfect. If our Sangha can embrace all of these people, then the Sangha is truly solid and has um, compassion. To me, the life as, uh, as uh, monastic brothers and sisters who left the Sangha is not the Sangha uh, exiled or, or, or not accepting them. It's because they have a different dream. It's because they, they're not satisfied with something. That's why they left. Or the scenario where they, they transgressed the precepts. 
or they they um, interrupt, disrupt the harmony in the sangha, or just feeling feeling like it's better for that person to be a lay friend than a monastic. It's not that the sangha which is send people away, monastics away when we dislike them. It's not like that. So we're practicing to create more opportunity to cultivate this little kindness. So in this, in the in the path of practice, in the process of practice, we will cross through phases. And we see that we need to sl to to live more slowly, and see whatever there's a light in our heart, and we need to take refuge in that, to love. And when we see that point, and we love, we have love, then we use the other, we help the other person to shine and to be brighter. That is our practice. And this rainwater in the uh, buffalo's footprint is the water of love. The rainwater of compassion. Just a little bit of love. A little bit of love. But how lucky we know that it's there so that we can offer that person love. The fourth method The fourth method is the most difficult method. It is this is how it goes. The fourth method is body is already very very unkind. Speech no no nothing can be called kindness. No no practice of loving speech just argue all the time. Blaming all the time. And then the mind, thoughts, is also unkind. In this case, Sariputta offers an example. It's like a person. I'm not reading the text because I don't want to lose too much time. It's like an exhausted person. It's about to die from thirst. Thinking, meaning there is a person who is lost in the desert, and that person has left their village behind a long time ago, and the village of, uh, beyond has not arrived yet. There's no rainwater in the footprints. There's a little bit of rainwater. This, there's no rainwater. And so this person is someone who is truly suffering. The teacher said that, our teacher said this is someone who is who is a destitute seeking way to to uh, suicide someone who is exhausted so actually the actually our teacher said that in our mind there are good seeds it's not like there is not but in in, in, in daily, day, daily life, we don't see that in that person. This person needs a great being, a great person, or friends who have great hearts, those who are like in the Sangha, to embrace. If we live close to this person, we might be affected. We would be fearful. For example, someone who is exhausted, about to die from thirst, crossing that desert, there's no water. And seeing that they're about to die, and then five minutes, there's a person who just walked past. And that person saw that situation and helped, helped the, the, the exhausted person to each step go to the next village. And then giving them medicine, and then buying bread, oatmeal, and everything for that person to eat. Then that person regained their health and survived. And that afterwards, that person was very grateful. So it's the same. If we see a person whose bodily action are not kind, speech is not kind, and in in their heart there's nothing that can be called kindness in our in our in our view. So the wise thing to do is not to get angry at that person, but to give rise to to love and compassion towards that person. It's just like the other, the person who helped, just like a, a bodhisattva or a great being. So in the sutra, is it like this? Um, a person whose words, uh, bodily actions are not kind, and whose heart there is nothing can be called kindness. This person 
for sure, is truly suffering and will go on to the wrong path. If the if they don't meet someone who who is there to help him, then for sure, their life will end. So open our heart to destroy our anger in ourselves to help that person. That is what a wise person would do. And so, this scenario is very challenging. In our life, perhaps just one time that we will meet this this case. If we cannot do it, we can ask the Sangha to support. I've seen a few cases like this. Cases that we, we, we can't help with anything and we ask the help of the Sangha. So, for example, there, ha there has been a few cases like this and in the world right now, there are prisoners. Those who, who, who were terrorists or did something that they had, they, they had to go to prison. So prisoners are those, there's nothing can be good in them. That's, that's just an example. But in Buddhism, there's no punishment in that way, like imprisoning them and then execute them. But in the past, I remember that the Plum Village Sangha or Te used to send books for prisoners in, in prisons to read. And so by chance, if they get transformed by reading those books, then that is a way of helping. Or we go into those prisons to share a little bit of our practice so they can practice. For example, the prisoners are, are those who, whose three actions are all unkind and they did something so life is punishing them. But in Buddhism, we think that it's not, it's not like they are like that and then they, we, would just, we would just send them away. But we give them a chance to, to be embraced and to be offered love. We ask the Sangha to help if we cannot do that ourselves. If the Sangha cannot help, then we have done all we can. We have wholeheartedly done everything we can. And this is a rare occasion, maybe just once in our lifetime. The fifth method, the fifth scenario, this one is a uh, is the monastic brothers and sisters who, who laugh a lot, smile a lot, <laughs> and speak a lot, talk a lot. So laugh a lot, smile a lot, and talk a lot. <laughs> Bodily actions, speech, and mind are all kind and lovely. But there are still people who get angry at these people. The thing is, the cool thing is, we still get angry with this with this person. This is a lake. It's very clear and cool. So now we we reflect, contemplate. The fifth situation, if someone whose bodily action and speech and mind are all kind, then if we are wise and we have anger towards that person, then we need to look back. We need to look for ways to contemplate and, and, and put an end to our anger. So Sadi Putta said that this person is like a clear water, a clear lake of water. Santa Ana is very hot, very dry, and we walk past this, 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 this lake. And then, I mean, there's a person it's like exhausted from the heat and then take off their clothes and jump into the lake and then when they go back home, they feel a lot of hell to hold more retreats, organize more retreats, a lot of happiness to offer in the Sangha. It's very happy. Then, then a person whose bodily actions are kind, speech is kind, and thoughts are kind. And we are angry at that person, then our teacher said, there's only one thing, jealousy. It's born from jealousy, nothing else. They didn't say anything that will anger us. They didn't do anything wrong to anger, to, to, uh, to make us angry. They go to activities every day. They want to improve on their path of practice and we get angry at them. That's a, that's a pity. There's only one thing, jealousy. We see, oh, they have a lot of fans. Uh, speak to that person a lot and don't really pay attention to us and then we just let go like okay I don't want to hang out with that person anymore 
Then how how can we get angry at the clear lake? It's innocent. It's very beautiful. So we practice. We want our path to to be like that. To be a clear lake to our wives, to our children. To be a clear lake and cool lake to our sangha. So so then for what? So that when they have suffering, they can lean on our shoulder, because that solid lake is clear and cool. And we want to sit next to that lake and breathe. We want to jump into that, to bathe, to walk each step in meditation. And so our practice, the path of practice, is to become a clear lake for you, for me, and for everybody. Especially if you are partners or husband and wife, and we want to be lakes for each other, then we re reflect in all of these five um, cases. Which case are we in? Sometimes our lake, the water is covered with grass and and and, and algae, just like me. And sometimes we see that oh, I don't know why we uh, I suffer from this person so much. Go to work and go back home, and you won't get upset at me. Actions are not kind. It's just like a little bit of rain's water in the buffalo footprint. And so then we we look deeply and see which which case are we in. Then we give rise to the aspiration to practice, so that we can focus on the good thing, the good point. And if we nourish our love each day, if we do walking meditation to reflect. So that we can fill and fill more water in, into that buffalo footprints to become a lake, and then if there is a, a lake that is covered by moss and, and grass, then it, it can be a clear lake. We put those algae away, and so we practice with breathing meditation, walking meditation, and accepting our loved ones. It's like when we go home. Sometimes we see that, oh. This time, I don't know why. I don't know why I uh, I get upset easily, often, and say unkind things. And then we remember in this discourse that our leg is covered with algae, with uh, grass. So with that image, we see that oh, it's okay. Now my speech is not kind, but in my in my heart, we I still see it's okay. I want. I still want to help. I want to practice. So we practice in such a way that we pay attention to our speech and transform in a way that we can be a clear lake. And that is our practice. To wish everyone how we can practice each day, and we see that our anger. I don't think that uh, we just focus on the, the 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 beautiful thing, and we ignore the not so beautiful thing. We focus on the beautiful thing first. Then, when we have enough love, then we can embrace what is not kind in that person. And so, uh, we each day we can practice in such a way that. When I don't, uh, we don't know why we get angry. We have anger. There's an anger arising. Then we always blame the other person that that person is the cause. But what is the cause? The cause is the speech, or is it bodily action? Yeah, like that. So if the cause is the speech, then we need to look deeply and see. Oh, it's just a speech. Then at that time we do walking meditation. Don't do anything. Just do walking meditation and breathe to look deeply. It's just an unkind speech, but that person still has loving, lovely actions and mind and heart. When we are angry, we forget 
what is kind, what is beautiful in the other person. That is the key in this discourse. Don't ever forget the positive points in the, in the person when that person, when we are angry at that person or when that person is not kind. Don't think that someone who leaves the Sangha is a Sangha is expelling that person. Don't ever think that 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 person who leaves the Sangha is is uh, is not nice. Is that person who doesn't mm, practice, uh, whose practice is nothing can be called good, and then they leave. It's not like that. It's just one particular reason. You know, we practice and we can see that. And that is the good thing. The second thing is when we we, we, we reflect and we see which case we are on. And we can practice and we can improve. And the third thing is that we, we can practice in a way that our love expands. If we cannot embrace, then we ask the Sangha to embrace with us. So I like to stop here so the Sangha can have enough time because we have a ceremony after this talk. So I like to uh, wish that everyone uh, has a um, wonderful season after the range retreat for lay friends who come to practice with us for the three months. Uh, when you go home, and you can practice with 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 your loved ones or your colleagues or your um, co-workers. If they are clear leg, don't be angry at them. Just smile at them and say thank you. You are. Uh, Clear like water, very fresh. Enjoy every day. Thank you, thank you. Oh, he switched to English now. And so immediately at that time, we have more gratitude and more happiness. Don't be angry and jealous when that person is a clear leg. That's, that's a pity for that person. So I see that here, the Sangha, every one of us is a clear leg. Maybe a small leg, maybe a big leg but we're all legs that are clear. So I like to, uh, to hope that everyone can be con continue to be these legs for ourselves, for our loved ones, and for our um, co-workers and friends.